The next uh, talk uh, is by Dr. Lalit Verma on intravitreal injections in endocrinitis. It's an extremely important topic, can save many, many eyes. And I think uh, hundreds of students have learned from Dr. Lalit Verma at RP Center how to give intravitreal injections. The basics of endocrinitis. He's a doyen of the thing. Okay, thank you once again, uh, and I thank uh, Namrata Sharma for thinking about this very important topic, uh, which concerns, as I said, uh, all operating surgeons. People who don't operate, they in any case enjoy life, uh, but people who operate, they are always scared till the time they see their patient post-operatively. The next day, patient should be smiling. If not, believe me, surgeon also stops smiling for the entire day. His, his family also gets disturbed. So uh, also thanks to CIPLA for having agreed to uh, uh, support this session. So endophthalmitis, as I said, can occur whenever there is an entry in the eye. That is, we are calling off uh, exogenous endophthalmitis. And it's devastating. And uh, although we promise uh, 6669, and all of you operate uh, very early, 6966, you start operating. But if the patient does not have this kind of glow on distant thermoscopy, we are disturbed. And uh, it is very serious and it's a disaster. It's a disaster. Believe me, people who are faced, uh, they will understand why I'm saying so. But if you don't uh, intervene in time, or what uh, Anu had said, uh, high index of suspicion, and if you don't manage in time, and if you keep fooling yourself by giving drops and this thing, you can lose the eye, and this can, this can be the end result of this. That means the eye is gone. Eye is gone means eye has been murdered now. Eye is khatam, thais is balbai ho jata. It's, it's possible. But believe me, this uh, uh, smile, hap smile, reverse smile, even to operating surgeon only, because uh, he is the person who is responsible. Nobody will talk to the operating nurse or, or you know, medical superintendent of the hospital, nothing. But you are the first interface with the patient. So although incidence has gone down, but believe me, single case, if it happens to me, it is very stressful. In fact, my entire family will come to know, Achul Gadbad over here. Something wrong has happened, the patient has not gained. So, but you have to be concerned for the patient. So how to deal with it? First and foremost is what Anu said is that you have to differentiate from a reaction versus infection. S and we, all of us do take preventive measures, which I think Rajesh Sina may tell or I will just touch upon it. So we, first aim is to prevent any disease. Any disease aim is to prevent first. If not, then if it occurs, then you have to treat. For treatment, you have to have early diagnosis. Don't miss the bus. Don't say to the patient, why follow-up is not required, aap aajana jab takleef ho. I have heard a lot of people saying, follow-up is not required, you can come. But early diagnosis is important. And prompt treatment is important. Every, whether it's, suppose next day is a Diwali day or a holiday or you are going out, but no, you cannot till the time you see your patient. If you have to give injection, you give on the same day. If not, believe me, you will lose the eye. So for prevention, which I think Rajesh Sena will tell, but uh, I will just touch upon a couple of things that all of us are wise enough today to take care of pre-operative sources of infection. And if the eye is red, even on the operating day, or you know, patient has some uh, neighboring infection. So this we should not, you should not. You should defer the surgery because cataract is a elective surgery. You can easily postpone by a couple of days or weeks. Per-operatively, all of us pay uh, attention to the sterile instrumentation, ETO and uh, autoclaves. You should never compromise on irrigating fluids. You see, visco irrigating fluids are some things which go inside the eye. So never go for cheap fluids, which you know, suppose you are using a thinker lactate of a reputed company, 20 rupees, somebody selling 15 rupees, so don't go for it. Have a standard company equipment. Other thing is isolating the lashes. You see, lashes should not come in the way. Uh, now there's very good drapes are available. Betadine, betadine, and betadine is one thing because which has, uh, although despite betadine, also infection can occur, but betadine installation just before surgery, once in the waiting room, once on the table is important. Then most important is because, because the wound entry has to be uh, good, good wound construction. If your wound is irregular, believe me, it will, uh, it will allow ingress of organism. So good wound construction is very, very good. 
And if in doubt, wound is not good, then don't hesitate to put a suture there. Then intracameral antibiotics have come in a very big way. Very big way means I see virtually all the high volume cattle surgeons, uh, you know, at the end of surgery, they will, uh, you know, uh, with moxifloxacin, is a moxisip is available, there you can put. But, uh, uh, you know, actually three antibiotics are there which have been tested. One is vancomycin, one is cefuroxin, and third is uh, moxifloxacin. But moxifloxacin is uh, one antibiotic because a lot of data is available from India, from Arvind Eye Care System, where lakhs and lakhs of patients uh, have been done. And this study has been quoted by Stanley Chang also, and, uh, and everybody uh, yeah, uses it, Arvind data, that it does have a role. So I think uh, most of the surgeons adopt, and so should you that you should, at the end of surgery, put this uh, antibiotic. It may cause tasks sometimes, but uh, infection, it may take care. So, as I said, uh, prevention is the hallmark, but for treatment, I think uh, there are two, three modalities there, but intravital antibiotics, which I will touch upon, with me, Dr. Malika will tell, uh, because it's, it's just like a pus in the eye. It's, it's an infection in the eye. Vitreous cavity is full of infection. So there are microorganisms, exudates, uh, in the vitreous cavity, which, uh, which have the potential to, because of their toxin, this thing have the potential to destroy the retina, so you have to act very early. So intravital antibiotics has this, uh, is the mainstay of treatment. If you do it early enough, fast enough, uh, you will save the eye in majority of these patients, unless the organisms are not sensitive to the antibiotic, but uh, majority of the patients you will. Because sometimes you see uh, patients, uh, uh, some, uh, somebody may ring you up that there's infection, so I tell them, Injection lagout. And by the time patient reaches us, he is already responding. So, intravital antibodies act as a first aid in the management of post operative enteromyelitis. And as I said, if uh, organism is sensitive and you have injected early enough, mild to moderate patients uh, will respond excellently. So, key issues always are delay. You keep delaying because of multiple reasons. And delay that you do not differentiate from TAS or not willing to accept that my case has developed infection. And second is that you, there's a hesitancy in giving interval injection. Normally you will give, okay, you give some drops, I'll see you tomorrow, I'll see you day after tomorrow, tomorrow is Sunday, you come on Monday. That's not done. So delay in giving appropriate treatment can, and this I think uh, Anu has already covered, uh, we should differentiate TAS and endothelmitis. The reason is that uh, treatment is vastly different in both of them. In one, you load the patient with steroids. Load means give him one hour list prednisolone, give him IV prednisolone. Whereas in infection, it's not steroids, but it is primarily antibiotics. So you have to differentiate. And this chart I found very useful uh, uh, that, uh, you know, differentiate within signs and symptoms of TAS on left side and, you know, infectious endothelitis. I know uh, NU has covered, but there's uh, worth emphasizing that if there's a lot of lid edema and chemosis, this points towards infection. Limbus tulumus cordial edema, she has told, uh, is, is primarily a feature of TAS. Because the, because the insult is inside the chamber, therefore the whole, whole cornea is involved. In infection, the, this is localized. IOP in infection is slightly on the lower side rather than higher side. But in TAS, it can be high. And we already have a discussion and experience from a lot of other people that how to manage this. But if in doubt, most of the patients, you know, this chart will definitely help. But if in doubt, and patient has unusual pain, decreased vision, a lot of lidema, chemosis, corneal haze, hypopion, or exudates, in, always are on the side of infection. You will never, never repent. You should, uh, you know, give this internal antibiotic injection. So I'll just show you a couple of examples, like, uh, you know, these two patients, uh, one is a young lady who had undergone RK plus uh, cataract a uh, long time back, and this, uh, this uh, other patient. So we did, uh, you know, take recourse to this. But uh, in this patient, we did not give any intravitreal antibiotic injection. We loaded the patient with steroids. I'll just show you, this was uh, uh, one patient. You see the glow is reasonably okay. Not the best, but the glow is there. AC reaction is there, and fundus picture is like this. You load the patient with steroids from all the roots, and at the end of, uh, you know, patient gradually improving day by day, day by day. At the end of it, uh, Whatever you wanted, 6-6, six, six, patient has recovered. No internal antibiotics given at all. So another patient, uh, this lady had undergone RK a long time back, and then she underwent cataract surgery. You see corneal totally edematous. But what uh, 
of tilted my diagnosis towards stars was this whitish material if it is yellowish you think of infection but it's whitish you think of uh, maybe it's a lens matter or some uh, you know clump there so again uh, loaded this with steroids from all possible routes it took some time picture every day you see this uh, this cornea edema is resolving then this lens matter uh, is getting absorbed even this droppings have improved ultimately patient recovers with them so if you differentiate and tilt towards TAS, then load the patient with steroids. This is one of my recently operated the diabetic patient. This was the day one, as soon as I saw this patient, because he had a combined detachment. So we did a vitreous surgery on him. But first post-op day, you see this patient had like this. But see, this glow is reasonably good. So I thought TAS, but a lot of my fellow said, nee, sir, injection dena isko, antibody lagana. So I said, let's wait. So this patient had, uh, you know, a uh, history of multiple injections. In fact, Ozutrex, so, so many things had been done. He underwent vitreous surgery, and this was the result. So we persisted. You see, aim to show this is follow up very religiously. Chabbis, Athais, every day you take a picture, and hypopion is going down, going down. Ultimately, this patient recovered. But diagnosis was TAS. Not, we did not give any antibiotic injection. This was the end result. But if the picture is like this, so immediate internal antibiotic injection is required. Then you can't delay. You can't delay because as I told you, if you delay, and result can be thysis bulbi. That can happen. So if it's a definitive enthelmitis, and patient has uh, whatever vision, I don't uh, differentiate between, say, hand motions, PLPR, inaccurate. If he has not received any injection, you should immediately give internal antibiotic injection. And what to give, when to give, how to give, I think, Today, Google has taught us, and every uh, you know uh, literature also tells us this CME series we had uh, from AIS published long time back. Till today, it has all the information: what to give, when to give, how to give, and how to follow up. When to give is, I said earlier, the better. Or if you are following up a patient of TAS, the moment it worsens, immediately give the in injection. And when not to give, also you should know. If patient has, say, a uh, very virulent infection, which I think Malika will touch upon, vision is only PL, or there's a traumatic uh, uh, insult, foreign body here, in any case we are, or there's a detachment there, so in any case we have to go inside. Last I will say is, if the first internal does not work, if first internal injection is not working, I think you should start thinking that this patient may require vitreous surgery. Which to give, I think uh, most of us, uh, most of us uh, give Vanco and Kefta, but uh, if the infection is very virulent, you can give uh, imipenem or cholestine where gram negative is being suspected. But majority, the first is Vanco and Kefta. Amikacin and aminoglycoside went into disrepute, disrepute slightly because of the propensity to cause macular infarction. But if you take care of the dilution errors, I think they are also pretty safe. In fact, today, Amica effectivity towards gram negative is more than Kefta. Vanco still maintains its supremacy for gram positive. That is more than 90% sensitivity. But Keftazidine sensitive for gram negative is now 50, 50, 60%. This is the chart I think uh, which uh, everybody should have in this operation theater wall. And uh, I am thankful to CIPLA. They helped in uh, you know distributing all these charts to the entire body of AIS. Not once, not twice, so many times we did it. So this chart you can have from CIPLA or maybe you can write to AS office, they will supply. How to give? Because two injections are involved, so you have to decompress the eye. You can't give two injections in the eye because we, it's a blind uh, uh, this thing injection in the sense that we are giving one for gram positive, one for negative, and 0.1 ml of each, so I cannot tolerate 0.2 ml of injection. So you have to decompress the globe. And the best way in infection, in infection to decompress is biopsy. And most of us, uh, NTS segment surgeon may not be used to doing vitreous biopsy, so best is to do NTS segment paracentesis because this will lower the pressure, then you can inject two injections. Sequentially, don't mix up also. Don't take in one syringe. How to give, rotate slowly. Don't give a jet like this, because that will hit directly to the macula. And 30 gauge needle has to be used. Very important is after we are given the injection, then adjunctive treatment is important. Adjunctive treatment, what corneal surgeons give in corneal uh, infection or corneal abscess, is this concentrated cefazole and tobacin. All my patients will get concentrated cefazole and tobacin along with cyclopregics. 
and steroids normally I will start after seeing the patient uh, maybe after 24, 12 to 24 hours. And these are important because as the, as the intervital drugs are, you know, decreasing in concentration, these drugs, oral ciplox is known to penetrate inside the eye and we give it in the dosage of 1000 milligram uh, twice a day. Very important is how to judge because you have given the injection, you have given the adjunctive treatment. First one or two days are very critical. As I said, patient comes with smile on day one, you are happy that patient is responding. But any worsening, start preparing for PPV. No worsening and patient pain has gone, even though vision may not improve. Improvement of vision may take time. So no worsening, follow the patient again after 12 hours and slowly, slowly glow will come, the reaction will decrease and you will see the fundus also. So a couple of examples before I conclude. This one patient at presentation hand motions, no glow at all. And you see, we started uh, with Vanco and Kefta, but important is see the patient every day, every day, if not twice a day. And slowly, slowly the Senechia breaks, the fibrin melts away, glow starts coming, and vision takes time. It takes a couple of weeks for vision to come. So this is one patient who, you know, he came with reaction like this, a lot of corneal reaction, hypopion, but no interval had been given by the surgeon. So I thought I will still till the time I convince him for vitrectomy. Uh, we did give him interval injection and fortunately for me, this patient responded and vitreous surgery was not required. So if the interval has not been given, you can still, uh, you know, consider giving interval injection. This was another patient uh, where we, so in, in the RPC casualty, we analyzed that all these patients who come for injections, only 30% only patient had received interval antibiotics. Most of them were, you know, on topical drops or subconjunct injections. So that is not good. If it is infection, please give intravitreal because that is the site of infection. So that you have to give intravitreal rather than, you know, continuing topical drops. So this is another one patient where, you know, it was full of vitreous exudates. We gave, uh, we gave interval antibiotic injection because he had not received fortunately responded only to antibiotic injection only. So moral of the story is that give intravitreal antibiotic injection earliest possible if it is not already given. Last situation is that you have to refer it to Malika if the patient is not responding or in, it is deteriorating despite intravitreal injection, then I think vitreous surgery is warranted because vitreous surgery is likened as a IND because you have to debulk. You once you debulk the vitreous, then I think a response can improve. So these kind of surge, surge patients will require vitrectomy and Malika will talk about this vitrectomy. So just to conclude, uh, interval injections uh, are the mainstay of treatment if the patient presents early and response is pretty good. And as I said, it's like a first aid being given to the patients of infection. And uh, these are the patients, so if you give this first aid in time and properly and follow this patient uh, nicely, response is pretty good. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for this uh, great talk. Uh, would you give intravitreal uh, antifungal at the same time if you have a doubt? And would you give a steroid intravitreal as a routine? So if the clinical picture uh, forces me to think about fungus like it's a fungal granuloma, then I will. But as a routine, uh, if the patient is presented between three to five days, then I will give only antibiotic. If patient has delayed presentation, in delayed presentation, the possibility of fungus is very, very high. Then I will. And whenever I give anti and intravitreal voriconazole, that is my preferred drug. So in that, I will combine both the antibiotics as well as antifungal. But uh, usual presentation, acute onset of anathelmitis, uh, I will not. But if the patient not responding the day way I showed, then you start thinking your tentacles are high, why it is not responding. Either the sensitivity is different because by that time culture sensitivity report or, or PCR report uh, will come. So, or you start thinking of fungus. And believe me, fungus infection in this country is much higher than what EVS reported. EVS said only 3% are fungus. In our scenario, I think more than 15, 20% patients are fungal. And if the patient is immunosuppressed, suppose the patient gives history of immunosuppression, chronic immunosuppression, then also you should keep in mind antifungal agent. Uh, do you use uh, intravitreal chloroquinolones as the treatment of first choice? You said you put Vanco and Keftazidine as the yeah, mostly, yeah, mostly. Do you sometimes think that it's better to add uh, chloroquinolone uh, in uh, the isoprop
only one injection may work. Yes, yeah, instead of two injections, because we did uh, one study on uh, uh, intravitreal ciplox, ciplofloxacin, and it uh, did work very nicely. They have a wider spectrum. Wide, that, that's what I said. Yes. So the advantage of that is in those the, in that study, instead of giving two antibodies, we gave only one. Chloroquine has the advantage of wide spectrum, so you can give only one. And they can cover. And the, the dosage is around thousand micron. Yes, and they cover the atypical uh, bacteria like mycobacteria. Chlamydia, they also cover fungus actually. Yes. The chloroquine alone. It's so a good, it's a very good suggestion. It's yes. a very good. Uh, so I tend to use it as a first line also. Intrabitary. Yes. Do you advise, uh, yes. Do you advise vitreous step or not, sir, before huh? injection? Vitreous step. Vitreous step. Yeah, I said that vitreous step, if you're confident, do it. But if not, uh, tap is not good. Actually, biopsy is better because I don't want to inject, say, uh, put this 21 gauge and pull. Pulling is not good. So if it, you know, gentle pull, it's okay. If you don't exert your, uh, you know, all the might to take out the sample. So if you are well versed with the vitreous biopsy, that is better. If not, I think for usual NTA segment surgeons, I will say paracent is better. Because the trauma caused by uh, vitreous tap, if you are pulling, is, uh, is can result in a lot of traction to the vitreous base. or uh, even fungal also, how to deal with it uh, while we are injecting uh, intravitreal injections or while doing core vitrectomy? So what is 90 percent is? Negative, negative culture or negative? Yeah, yeah, that you can't help it. That depends on where you are because in which city you are, what kind of lab it is. Like I identified, I am in Delhi, I identified one lab in uh, Gurgaon. That lady does a fantastic job. If you see LV Prasad data, they, their pickup rate is very, very high, more than 60 percent. EVS, EVS 25% uh, was the pickup rate. So that depends on how good your lab is and when you have inoculated. You see, you should have these three plates ready, chocolate agar, sabarads, and this should be ready on the table. So you, so that you inoculate. Don't wait for that uh, syringe to your material to dry up and then you inject. So it is your onus also, how you, you know, prepare your samples. So I think uh, that point is well taken. I don't, uh, you see, I go by more clinical uh, sense rather than by microbiological. Or you can use this PCR, this, uh, you know, Exciton. They do a wonderful job. You can send this sample in, uh, to this Bangalore and they give you results within 24 hours. And their pickup rate is very, very high. If you depend on that amplification, you know, this PCR, it works much better than a routine lab where you send the sample. But this sampling is important because this can save your skin. Tomorrow, suppose there is a, a medical legal case, and if you're not sending the sample, you can be in soup. So sample bhejna to hai, but uh, you have to depend on more on clinical sense rather than sampling. Like Malika was saying that suppose patient is not responding to, say, Vanco Kefta, so I'll think of, say, gram negative, think of cholestine, think of imipenem, so start, or think of fungus, something of that sort. Instead of Vanco septa, why don't you go to Vanco or Vanco plus imipenem or Vanco plus uh, cholestine? Can, you can, you can. I said that, I said this is the commonest we use, most of it, but you can. Because most of the infections are not so virulent. Most of the infections, if you catch on uh, you know third, fourth day, are not so virulent. If virulent, then what you say is correct. If you're suspecting of gram negative, and vision is barely, you know, he can't see hands also. Whereas if you see hand and they, you know, it's a mild to moderate infection, then uh, Vanco Kefta may work. But if it is very virulent, then uh, what you are saying, that would be the right see, choice. that is just the guideline. Whenever you see a case, you have to first have your own idea whether I'm dealing with a gram negative or positive. If it's positive, whether it's pneumococcus or is it your staph, that you have to have an idea in your mind. And you have to uh, tailor your antibiotic based on what you think. It really is not that vancocepta only. Yeah, yeah. So many it times if you think it's pneumococcus, you may change to a citriaxone. Or if you think it's an anaerobic bacteria, for, then you put clindamycin in addition to whatever. So definitely, lot of, uh, most of the time, our uh, cultures will be not very, uh, they'll be negative. So we ultimately, we are depending on our clinical judgment, yeah. and that's what saves the day. So as I said, this is first aid. First aid may not be complete. Now first is to save. So you should shift to, you know, the stronger antibiotics, depending on your clinical sense and the picture. If I'm suspecting negative, or most of this, uh, you know, when this epidemic occurs, so suppose in any one place there are, you know, 20, 30 cases, most of them will be pseudomonas. So then you don't give this. 
how much you suggest uh, fortified antibiotics sir in this how much fortified antibiotics vanco septar uh, 45 yes sir so i want vanco because once we give vanco only 0.1 is utilized so I, this is a 5% vancomycin mm. so we put that uh, dropper and give it to the patient so he will have three one is uh, concerned in cefazurin concerned in tobacin and vanco he will put okay. all three of them every one hour every one hour round the clock the not uh, because somebody uh, has to put around the night also. But I'm seeing corneal toxicity, sir. Don't Those worry drugs. about that. You see, at this point, my priority is to <laughs> save the eye, not toxicity. Okay. Basak will control toxicity. <laughs> because <laughs> the reason, is, no, the reason is because at this juncture, I want that, like Madam was saying, pressure should be controlled, and this drug should go inside the eye. Toxicity will taper this, drug, you know, after some time. Toxicity is not the prime concern. I know ocular medicamentosa is a big subject. There have been, you know, webinars held on that. But at this juncture, when the eye is in crisis, you are in crisis, first aid is not toxicity. I, I, I have two comments, like uh, concentrated tobra. Tobramycin is not available freely, injectable tobramycin specially. You have to find out. Our combination in corneal infection point of view, like when we see severe kind of this, we give SEFTA and Cipro. Cipro, recent study says that Cipro, the sensitivity level for gram negative is higher than any other commercially available. That's why even we, uh, 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 our group of BR surgeon, they also give oral Cipro. Uh, yeah, oral dose, Cipro double, we also give. Oral double Cipro. dose oral Cipro, so that 1000 milligram BD or 750 milligram BD, and we give combination of hourly or half an hourly SEPTA so and two points, Ciplox. two points Basak has said. Oral Ciplox, I also gave 1,000 BD from the day as soon as the patient leaves the operation theater. In fact, I will give one IV Ciplox at, in the operation theater itself. And oral, uh, you know, this will be given for not five days, but more than 10 to 14 days will be given. But I agree with that even, uh, you know, what Malika said, in intravitreal also, because the spectrum is much higher. Even for gram negative, it covers. Yeah. Yes. So I have another comment, like, uh, I think uh, that I do not know who server will discuss that. Whenever you see a case of end of your own case, immediately antenna sh should be straight and the message should go, should go to your, your <coughs> all people that this has happened. So there are four, five, 10, 12 cases has been done. Absolutely. The same word. So call them, call them because this patient came on third day, day, day four. Call them and now just think why it has happened. So that means as the treatment of the patient will be going on at the same time the investigation, internal investigation will be going on in your OR, your setup, all this. In, so, the, past, so absolutely. in the past we had two incidents of two in the same OR. Streptococcal pneumonia infection, diplococcus, and we did throat swab of the surgeon and the uh, scrub nurse, and both are positive. A long time back, about eight, eight. Very, nine very years nice back. points. Very, very nice points. And both are positive for their oropharyngeal. I mean, so are positive for diplococci. Then we thought it is a just kind of assumption, but then genetic, all these things should be. Happened. But if you keep your antenna, I mean. Very nice, very nice. Antenna should always be high, especially if you are dealing, because there have been now published data where if surgeon is talking too much on the table, it has been attributed, like Basaka said, even in interval injections also, that the culture from surgeon's throat as well as from your culture has the same genotypically also. So talking has to be minimized because, uh, and the other point was, you see, I remember I had three patients end off, so I stopped my OPD rang up everybody list, uh, you know, who got operated by, aapko to infection nahi hua, aapko nahi hua. So if it is a one case, then you don't do that. But if it is, you're in a hospital and the, you should search the entire list, kis kis ka surgery hua and try to find them that they are doing well or not. This is very important. Uh, suspecting fungal and ophthalmitis, how far is it really possible in the regular post-operative cases what we do? It's generally only the traumatic or uh, any trochlear uh, foreign body, but not in the regular post-operative. No, no, regular post-ops also fungal happen often. Uh, it's not you see, yeah, especially in patients who are immunocompromised, they are on dialysis, so these patients may be slightly more prone to have fungus.
or if the contamination is there. You see, it's never surgeon's not, fault. Not always contamination. I would say that even normal conjunctival flora does have con uh, fungal element. If you take 100 sample from normal individual, they does. So even they are not compromised and probably during surgery you in excite them and they get a chance to go inside. So majority end of thalmitis occurs because of flora only. Yeah. Therefore the level one evidence is of betadine. Betadine aapko teen baar dal nahi hai, to one drop, one drop, so one drop. we do maintain all that, but uh, immediate post-op when we are thinking of end of thalmitis, generally we give only the yeah, yeah. Not oil, but not for yes, yes, the But, but really madam, you are right, you are right, immediate post-operatively majority it will not be fungal. It will not be fungal. But remember, fusarium has been reported on day one. On day one, fusarium has been reported. But what Basak said is very good. Tentacle should be high. Antenna should be high that start thinking. We have to respond. Are you very good? Think of something else. One point, we uh, operate in a rural area, sir. Uh, so routine post-op, we don't give PRED. We give only antibiotic and dexamethasone because oh, of the hygiene what the patients can't maintain with the precipitate of the PRED. What you were saying, like the routine mild task, which nowadays we see in all the post-operative gets wet washed off with the prednisolone hourly, what we do. So is it legible for us to give bread for the cases who are having mild inflammation on the first post-operative day? Or is it like we should give prednisolone for all the post-operative cases inevitably? Is it DEXA? Is it okay? I just want a <laughs> second Bas opinion from you. Routine, Basak, what Madam is asking, routine, routine, routine post-operative, routine post-operative yeah. treatment. It depends on your own practice and your population. No, she's from a rural, she's asking rural. rural. Setup, I think routine post-operative, you should give some form of steroid, whether, and that depends on your uh, type of surgery. No, DEXA versus prednisolone, she's questioning DEXA versus prednisolone. No, 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 they, both are same, both are same that way, when from Anti-inflammatory point of rate is naturally higher, but both are same. Sometimes we avoid prey because not very good prey are available in the country and they cause lot of precipitation. Problem, lot problem with problem. Lash, yeah, yeah. lash and that clean yeah, madam, is very difficult. That's why we prefer the, clear solution. The reason she is asking is because prednisolone tends to have that white, white, uh, and yeah. if the, if that, the, if the patient, why, that's why no, you, important is not precipitate, important is cleaning. If cleaning, they clean, yes, yes, wound clean. may get compromised. That is, so that is.